Hey guys, it is officially 2020. Happy New Year. I celebrated the new year by moving into a different place, so ended up having to tear down my whole studio setup and kind of start from scratch, build it up into a completely different environment. And that gave me the opportunity to talk about something I've been wanting to discuss for quite some time, which is sound treatment and a home studio environment. I do post-production sound for feature films, episodic television, commercials and ad campaigns, and of course YouTube, but I also track and mix music. So I need my home studio not only to be able to handle post-production capabilities, but also be able to record clean vocal takes in it, get acoustic instruments sounding really good, and mix all that together in a way that's going to sound great translating out of the space too. In order to accomplish that in a home studio environment, there are really three big issues that need to be addressed. Those are sound isolation or soundproofing, reverb or reflections, kind of echo, and resonant frequencies, which are called room modes. Sound isolation refers specifically to sound coming in from outside of your listening or your recording environment and contaminating it. So if you have windows or thin walls, stuff that might permeate those, that's what you're trying to isolate yourself from. Reverb is what happens when sound waves reflect off of harder surfaces in your room and kind of echo a little bit around the space you're working in. And that's challenging because what you want is the most accurate direct representation of what's coming out of your speaker. And reverb in a room causes you to get a little bit of the sound of the room, which distorts your perspective on what you're hearing and isn't really what you want. And resonant frequencies or room modes are similar to reverb in how they work. It's basically a lot of lower end basic energy that can build up in your room and cloud a lot of what you're hearing so you can't quite pick out the discrepancies or flaws in your audio. Also, a lot of home studios get set up in square rooms rather than, say, rectangular rooms, and square rooms actually exacerbate a lot of these problems. And that's why you don't see that shape in a lot of professional high-end studios, because they're built from the ground up to mitigate these sorts of things. You'll see walls that aren't quite parallel, the ceilings are a little bit slanted to reflect sound a little bit differently, and a lot of the time they'll actually use sound isolating materials during the construction process. So, obviously best case scenario, and that's very expensive to do, but you can still get great audio out of a home studio setup by addressing these problems. Now, my home studio, for example, has all plaster walls and a hardwood floor, which are all super reflective hard surfaces, and I've got two big windows on one wall that just let every sound from the outside in. On top of that, it's kind of a square shape, so I get a lot of that low frequency buildup that makes it hard to hear sounds coming out of my speakers if I don't treat it properly. The first step I took was to address some of the reverb and reflections in this room, and I did that by laying down a half inch thick carpet across the entire wood floor. Carpet's a much more absorptive, softer material than wood is, so it immediately helped with the reverb. You don't necessarily have to cover every square inch of the floor if you want to do this. You can get an area rug that will maybe cover, you know, up to about a foot from the wall, two feet from the wall, and you can put a rug pad underneath it to just increase the density, increase the thickness, and it'll act as sort of a sound absorber for your floor. The next step I took actually was able to address all these issues at once, and that was to build some sound panels. Sound panels work by absorbing a lot of the sonic energy traveling through the air and dissipating it across the panel material, and that does a few things at the same time. It, of course, dampens reflections because you don't have as much energy bouncing off the walls. It cuts down on room modes, those resonant frequencies, because it's kind of doing the same thing. It's not letting that energy build up. And by nature of both of those, it's cutting out a lot of the frequencies and a lot of the sound transfer from one side of the panel to the other. After measuring my window, Windows, I decided I needed three panels per window, each measuring 24 inches by 48 inches. And I wanted to cut down on a lot of the low frequency energy that was coming in from outside, so I stacked two two inch thick rock sole sheets per panel. There are already a lot of videos out there about how to build sound panels, so I won't go too deep into that, but I used Roxel's rock wool to construct the, the actual panel material. I wrapped that in effectively giant pillowcases of fabric and stapled that into a few frames that I custom built, and then I wrapped that in another, again, sort of porous fabric to allow sound to come in and be affected by the panel. I also wanted them to be relatively easy to remove should I ever need to take them down, so I used Z-hooks to mount them to the wall, and they immediately made a huge difference. By using those four inch thick panels, I cut down on a lot of the low frequency and high frequency transmission from outside to inside. It also cuts down on all those resonant frequencies and sort of bassy room modes, so I'm not getting all that buildup. And it 
fixes high-end reflections, so I'm not getting all the reverb in the room like I was before, simply by making that decision to again go with 4-inch panels rather than standard 2-inch. That made the left side of the listening position really, really sound isolated and dead, but the right side of the room still had a little bit of reflection because it was just a solid wall. I ended up hanging another 2-inch thick panel there just to get rid of some of the high-frequency reflections. I put it horizontally at about head height so that anything that was coming directly off the wall wouldn't bounce straight into my ears and I can focus again more on directly what's coming out of my speakers. One of the mistakes that I see a lot of people make in home studios is they'll pick a wall and they'll put their speakers and their whole system kind of right up against that wall. And what that does when your speakers are playing back sound is it's sort of coupling them to the wall and the wall will resonate with a lot of that low frequency energy. Also, your speakers are firing sound directly at you, but they're emanating it in all directions too, so you get a lot of those early reflections coming off the wall directly into your listening position, and you can have your audio obscured without you even really realizing it. To solve that, what you can do is move your speakers away from the wall if you can by about a foot or two feet ideally, and I end up putting sound panels that are about three inches thick right behind them. So again, they catch a lot of that low frequency resonance, they stop a lot of the high frequency reflection, they cut down on some of those room modes again, and it makes for a lot better and more accurate of a listening environment by having that material sort of in front of the listening position. The last thing I did was specifically to target low frequency energy, which tends to build up around the corners and the edges, especially in square rooms. So you can build what are called bass traps, and they're just triangular thick sound panels, it's nothing too complicated. But by hanging them in the untreated corners of the room, I was able to capture a lot of that low frequency resonance and get the last sort of clouded muddiness out of the listening environment. One final thing that I didn't find totally necessary in my room, but you might find really helpful in yours, you can also hang panels directly above the listening position from the ceiling. And if you angle them slightly back towards the rear of the room, you'll be able to mitigate a lot of those reflections off the ceiling and anything that does happen to come off those panels, it'll be directed away from the listening position. So that about covers it. I know this is a lot of information and it can get kind of confusing quickly. Acoustics, acoustics are hard. There's not really any other way around it, but I hope that by breaking some of this information down, you can take these ideas and apply them in your own home studios. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to comment below with any questions. Don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, come follow me over on Instagram at AXK, and thanks for watching.